Hey guys, it's Emma Vigling with TYT Politics. How's everyone doing today? Um, I hope, hope everyone's having a great Tuesday. And a lot of you guys have been asking us here at TYT Politics to focus as much as we can on the third party candidates. You know, you have the media only talking about Trump nonstop, a little bit about Clinton too, but they're trying to make it the horse race just between the two of them. And we know that's not true. We have two other candidates Jill Stein and Gary Johnson in the race. Uh, Jill Stein is going to be doing a town hall tomorrow on CNN, um, and I'll be doing a video on her, highlighting her and, and what I saw when I went to the Green Party convention uh, about her and about the Green Party and all of that. But today I wanted to focus a little bit on Gary Johnson. Um, he is obviously the Libertarian candidate. He's polling a lot higher right now than Jill Stein. Um, and being from New Jersey, going to a private school, I have a lot of conservative friends, uh, believe it or not, and they uh, all are, a lot of them are considering voting for Gary Johnson. So I want to talk about where he stands, who who he is uh, a, a little bit. So if you guys don't know, uh, Gary Johnson used to be the governor of New Mexico. Um, he's really surging right now. He's raised over a million dollars uh, within this 24-hour period, kind of a phone phone bank. Uh, Julie says Gary Johnson is for the TPP. That is correct. I'll get into his policy decisions and his policy beliefs in a little bit. He needs to get 15% in these five polls. ABC News slash Washington Post, CBS slash Wall Street Journal, the CNN, Fox News, and then the NBC slash Wall Street Journal poll. Curiously, all of those po those polls are corporately owned organizations. They didn't really take into account Quinnipiac, which is, I think, one of the better ones, uh, or Pew, or anything like that. All of those are news uh, organizations that news can are a part of major news conglomerates. So it's curious that they're taking those polls into account and not the other ones. Um, and according to 538 right now, he's teetering around 10% in an average uh, of the polling. So, um, and FYI, by the way, uh, Jill Stein's around 4.5 in that average. So, first of all, where does Gary Johnson stand? Um, you know, so again, he's the former governor of New Mexico. Uh, he ran his campaign on small, ta uh, small government tax cuts. He ran as a Republican. He was governor as a Republican. And while he was governor in his first term, he vetoed 47% of the bills during his uh, first six months in office, which, is, which was a national record at the time. So either you could say, you can make the point, he's a very principled guy, he's someone who really sticks to his beliefs, uh, or you could say, this guy can't run a fucking McDonald's. This guy really doesn't, doesn't know... Um, how to govern, and the results, uh, the, the criticisms of him were a mixed bag, as to be expected, because, you know, this is a partisan country, we have people that believe different things, um, and during his first term, he cut the federal, or not the federal, excuse me, uh, he cut the state income tax by $47 million, and he repealed a prescription drug ta tax, so all of that sounds very Republican conservative, however, in, during his second term, he really diverted from the rest of the Republicans, and he was one of the first national politicians to actually take a hard stance on marijuana. In 1999, he said that marijuana should be legal, which was great, and he stuck to that. He floundered a little bit. He would say something in between decriminalization and, and, uh, and legalization, but overall, he was one of the first politicians to really put that on the map. Not even Democrats were saying that. Most Democrats, obviously. Um, definitely Republicans weren't saying that. And Gary Johnson also emphasized his opposition to the war on drugs. Um, he called it a bust. Uh, he said it was a bust, really didn't help anybody, and he should know. He's on the border state in New Mexico, was the governor of that state. Uh, one of the states that is most heavily affected by the war on drugs, obviously. So a really good stance by Gary Johnson there. But then one, once again, we have a mixed bag from Gary Johnson. He wanted to privatize the school system in New Mexico, uh, which I think is disastrous, wanted to do a voucher system for the most part. 
he wanted to do a lot of private prisons, which I know is something that a lot of you guys care about, and seems to run contrary to his belief in terms of uh, ending the war on drugs, because those two specific ideas go a bit hand in hand. You know, the government just keeps locking these people up for these these minor drug offenses and for even major drug offenses and then funneling them into this private system that continues to rake in the cash, the cash money, if you will. Um, so, yes, again, a mixed bag. Um, New Mexico does have term limits, so he served two terms and then he was out in 2002. He couldn't run again in 2002. But, you know, the people of New Mexico seem to have a very fairly favorable opinion of him as their governor. He endorsed Paul Ryan in 2008. And Paul Ryan in 2008, if you were... I mean, Paul Ryan, excuse me, I, I really misspoke. Ron Paul, gosh, these uh, these names, <laughs> these people, Ricky Bobby. He endorsed, endorsed Ricky Bobby in 2008. These pe people that have for, uh, two first names. Um, so yeah, he endorsed Ron Paul in 2008. So he really did continue on that libertarian streak. Um, and then in 2012, he ran again. He was not very successful in that run. Um, if, if you guys even recall, uh, it's, I'm sure a lot of you don't even remember that he was a presidential candidate in 2012. He received just less than 1% of the vote. I think it was a, it was actually 0.99%. So Right on, right, right under that little threshold there. Uh, somehow, one percent sounds worse than 0.99 percent. I don't know why uh, to me, but uh, in in total, he received around 1.275 million votes. Um, so he did. He received over a million votes in the popular vote in in 2012. But now that we have such a wild card on the Republican side in Donald Trump. It seems that his popularity and the amount of votes that he's going to get as a libertarian candidate are, is going to grow. His chances are way better this time. Again, he's polling at an average of around 10%. And um, the first debate is on September 26. So remember that date, September 26. He has until then to get to 15% in those, in those uh, s s particular polls that I had listed. Jason Big says 0.99%. Wow, milk, milk can even get to 2%. Is this the Jason Biggs? Is this the real Jason Biggs? Hi, Jason Biggs, the actor, if that's actually you. Um, so he, he could easily get to 15% by then with the amount of, expo of exposure that he's currently getting. Um, and so just a little bit more of his policy views. He's very pro-gun. Um, if you guys care about that stuff, he's very, you know, do what you want with guns. Doesn't very, very conservative in that particular area, and he's not good on climate change either, essentially. He doesn't want the government to intervene um, in terms of promoting green energy. He essentially wants to let the private industry do what they, what they want to, which is consistent with the libertarian philosophy. So he's not my ideal candidate. I like the marijuana stuff, obviously, um, but there are a lot of young people that are fiscally conservative that uh, that, that care about social issues. He doesn't really care. He says gay marriage, have at it, have at it, Hoss. He doesn't care about that. But keep in mind, the Koch brothers are self-described libertarians. So this brings me to his funding, which I wrote down over here. So if you guys have watched any of my videos in the past, you know I'm obsessed with the money. That's how politics works these days. Gary Johnson doesn't have a ton of funders. He really doesn't. He doesn't have a ton of money. Um, and 53% of the money that he has raised um, are from small individual contributions. So that's, an, that's a majority. That's great. It's not Bernie Sanders, if we recall, that $27 figure. That was lovely. But 43% or 40, sorry, excuse me, 47% are, uh, are from larger industries. So I, I included his top six donors, the, I, not top five, which is usually the number people use, but the six is something I thought was notable, so I wanted to include it. So his top, his top donor, uh, by the way, this is, I think, separate from PACs. It's not, they, these are just donors to his 
Uh, there's no dark money involved here. This is all the stuff that's on the books, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, his top donor is GTCR Private Equity. They've given uh, uh, over uh, just just over 10k to him. So private equity firm sounds pretty Republican to me. Second is Morningstar. They're a food processing company, but it just seems like they have um, a, a lot a libertarian uh, executive board or leadership there that really has a strong libertarian philosophy. So that's mostly the reasoning behind that. Um, third largest industry is ONG Industries. That, or third largest donor, excuse me, is ONG Industries, a construction and logging company with uh, 6,400. GBI is number four. That's a wealth management company. Again, some Republican stuff uh, going on there. Uh, the fifth largest donor is McRae and Metcalf. They're another construction company. And then the sixth largest donor, the Marijuana Policy Project with 5,000, but then that goes to show that that's the largest contributions that he's getting as opposed to Hillary Clinton where it's like in the tens of millions of dollars. So Gary Johnson obviously not getting that kind of cash, but who knows? Because the Koch brothers have refused to give any of their money to Donald Trump, uh, they've had a very public spat, this money could be going to Gary Johnson. There's been a lot of speculation on that front. My personal opinion is that the Koch brothers are too smart to give to Gary Johnson. I don't think he's going to win. I think he will make a huge dent, and I think that he will be, he is the most viable of the third-party options in terms of, not because I agree with him, but in terms of the movement that is behind him, especially because the Republican Party has become such a Frankenstein of, ha of hatred of other people and young people who may not agree with the Bernie Sanders policies, the, the future of the liberal movement and, that, and the progressive movement are flocking to that side. So as the Republican Party is fraying, the libertarian movement is growing in that sense. But I don't think that the Koch brothers are going to give to him because I think they don't really see a viable... Uh, option with or they don't believe that he's going to win the presidency going forward they know that most of the corruption that is uh the most effective is when you support down ballot lap dogs uh on the congressional side uh in senate races even on the state side when you pump money into those elections say you know we you have a hillary clinton presidency but then you have all these you know, corporate drones who are even more corporate than Hillary on the Republican side, just obstructionist Tea Partiers who say that they're patriots but just make sure the government does nothing, does dick for poor people, all funded by the Koch brothers, uh, then, that's, then that's how you effectively obstruct government enough for, for you to get your, your, your tax breaks for your oil and stuff like that. So... Again, uh, that's an overview of, of Gary Johnson. While the Koch brothers publicly say that they are libertarians, they're just corporatist crony capitalists, so I doubt that they will be giving to him. But as Gary Johnson uh, continues to get exposure, I'm, I'm, I believe that he will get to that 15% number. I've said that before. But um, even if he does, uh, Hillary Clinton... And Donald Trump could rig the rules in some way or, or change the, the threshold for him because they definitely don't want a third person on that stage.